Let's go. Let's go, guys. We are back with another one. Welcome to Obstacles Opportunity. Everyone hates Tesla. We are here for one of the wonders of the world, Tesla Gigafactory in Berlin. We're going to do a live walkthrough. This is the first, allegedly. Shout out to Fully Charged Show and give them a like, of course, as we always do. Man, let's just hop into this video, guys. I'm super excited to show you this because this is the front lines. Let's go inside the headquarters. Let's go inside the Gigafactory so you can actually learn about the techniques, the strategies, and the technologies that we have inside these Gigafactories and understand why we are going to crush the competition. And not only that, why Tesla is just an amazing company all the way around. Sometimes you guys are looking at stock tickers and not the magic that happens inside these factories. This is going to be exciting. Let's go. Some say when you have seen one car factory, you have seen them all. And I don't know about you, but I have seen my share of car factories around the world by now. So what on earth am I doing here? Well, this one right behind me might just be that little bit more interesting. First of all, it's one of the biggest car manufacturing sites in the world. It is filled with interesting technology. And normally it's not that easy to gain access until now, because we are among the first journalists ever who are allowed to enter and you are invited as well. So this is the Gigafactory from Tesla in Berlin, Germany. And this is the Fully Charged Show. Let's go. The first to be invited in the world. I'm super excited for this, man. Let's get it. Warm Fully Charged Show. Welcome to Roland Tamerlane. Right, here we are, the Tesla Gigafactory in Berlin, Germany. And yes, I need to put on some protective gear just to make you guys laugh about it. You know, Tesla safety first teams are calling these places giga for a reason because these factories are absolutely massive oh we've got something in common i knew we should have sent imogen to do this but anyway to put that in perspective the whole area where they are building these cars equals about three square kilometers so 1.2 square miles and it equals about 31 football fields or soccer fields if you live in silicon valley one more interesting fact tesla uses the widely accepted measuring technique of the hamster to show how massive these places are no, for real, the company claims that they can fit about 41 billion hamsters inside this facility. Right, carry on. Look at these systems, look at the process, look how the factory is clean. This is some of the most advanced manufacturing facilities on the planet. It's so exciting to see this, guys, because a lot of people just don't realize for so long, China has been the cutting edge or the manufacturing titan in the world and i give him respect for that but now we are taking back the crown in position with tesla these are some of the most advanced factories in the world and again that is why tesla has a hundred percent foreign ownership inside china because china knows that these factories are not just factories these are citadels for technology <laughs> That's what I love about car factories. You hear the buzzing going around, sparks flying, robots doing their job. And what are we doing today exactly? Well, sparks flying around is what I said. We are following a guided tour. So actually, I'm pretty curious myself what we are going to learn and see today. But as soon as I hear or see something very interesting, I will share it with you immediately. What I do know is that in this Giga factory, Tesla is producing battery cells, battery packs, electric drivetrains for electric vehicles. So battery cells, battery packs, electric drivetrains in the car in itself. Vehicles. And of course, this is the place where all of these people and all of these robots are producing the world's best selling electric vehicle on the planet. You know what it is, right? Do you recognize it already? Indeed, this is the starting point of the Tesla Model Y. Tesla claim that this factory, this Gigafactory in Berlin, is their most modern, sustainable, and efficient factory, even compared to the other five Gigafactories around the world. You have one in Texas, in Nevada, California, New York, and Shanghai. So we got Texas, Nevada, California, New York, New York, and Shanghai, and then Berlin. Guys, how many factories is that? Tesla is established in Texas, Nevada, California, and New York. That is four factories in the United States of America, two outside Shanghai and Berlin. Now, if that's not bringing jobs back to America, I don't know what else will convince you. I guess you're going to need a politician to sell you dreams. But for some reason, in Germany, they are doing the best they can. And what I do know is that they are able to produce up to 500,000 Model Ys a year. There you go. So we're going to move into the paint. 
Right, Marco, you might say a paint shop is a paint shop, but you say this is the most advanced paint shop in the world. Can you tell us why exactly and what is different to the others? Different to the other ones is, of course, that we deleted a lot of processes which are not really necessary, also not for the customer. And this gives us the possibility, for instance, creating a longer paint line so that we can offer the special colors. And what have you changed exactly then? No, what we have changed is um, the first idea was always deleting processes which are not really needed. So which is, for instance, an addition oven. So that's where we are running an OVID process, wet sealer, wet application directly through one oven, mm -hmm. which also makes it very efficient so and also the paints are very efficient of course. yeah but how do you ensure quality then because i think we all know that the first teslas that came off the production line didn't have the best paint jobs in the world um how have you improved the process and the quality then also so that's a good question and that's okay but most cars when they have their first line of production just don't have good paint jobs okay so that's nothing unique to tesla that is unique to the development of scaling a product scaling especially a car which is very complex, but I'm going to allow the guy and expert on the ground to explain it. So one topic is eliminating processes because each manual process can add failures to the car. Mm -hmm. So that's why no people are involved here. So that means we have an automatic cleaning. And auto so I'm going to say this again, adding more processes can create failure, human error. So deleting those processes in steps allow the product to have less areas of failure. And so this automatic cleansing, this automatic painting helps increase the efficiency and effectiveness of the process and deleting those steps, those human errors, and then also additional steps that always can be bringing up issues. An automatic lower, automatic stations, and we have a camera system which is checking the entire surface in the end. And you mentioned the Quicksilver and the Midnight Cherry Red, right? Those are colors that have specifically been designed here. Yes. Uh, is that um, is this paint shop the only paint shop in the world that does that now? Um, not really. Quicksilver also got recently. So they're just talking about colors and if they're available elsewhere, right? But Midnight Cherry is one of the colors that's only available at Berlin. It means we can apply the seven layer directly, mm -hmm. which the other one just can't apply in one sequence. Mm -hmm. All right. Would you and, then, and then he's saying it's because they have a very long line, 300 meters, so they're able to actually apply the sequence. Say the quality has improved because of Germany or because of Tesla? Yeah, this is a bit of a question I get asked very <laughs> often. So yeah. that means, of course, I guess we are looking at the car a bit differently. And most of us, we have an automotive background from other OEMs? car manufacturers, OEMs. So, of course, we came with a certain knowledge and also requirement. And also, Elon was here very often, and he said clearly that he wants to get the best quality car out of Berlin. Most definitely, a lot of workers brought in a lot of skills, but definitely it's different at Tesla. So, here at Loud and Clear, we have arrived in the stamping area. And the sound you hear in the background is not some big dinosaur stomping its way to Berlin, it is this humongous pressing machine. The pressing machine is going to be amazing, guys. Take a big plate of aluminium and you put it into the machine. And then in four to five stations, it gets stamped further and further until it has the shape of a front, rear, or a side panel of a Tesla Model Y. But the sound is actually pretty frightening. So that's how the side panels and rear panels are created, just panels around the vehicle. It actually does feel like a car factory, let's be honest. But this one does have some little Tesla geekiness to it. For example, you see more and more, yeah, boring gray walls getting graffiti. You have this even brighter colored slide where employees can slide down. And of course, Tesla. So they have a, you know, fighter fighter pole where you can slide down, graffiti on the wall, just brighten it up, bring in a techie flow to the industrial factory, which can always be just dead space. I wouldn't be Tesla if they don't give their machines some funky names. This robot behind me is Godzilla, for example. Down there, King Kong is working. And as you can see, it is called Godzilla because it's able to lift an entire body and weight of a Model Y up to the next level of the facility. Godzilla in the building. Now the next process is the casting. Until now, the Gigafactory Berlin has felt like a car factory, but now we are at the casting part of the factory, and this feels more like a heavy industrial plant. And the Giga casting is also, at one point, this factory is making a leap forward compared to other factories. And fellow Dutchman, Peter Bosch can tell us everything about it. Can you tell me what is the big leap in terms of technology that you are doing different than other factories? Yeah. Now, what Tesla is doing against all other factories, right? They're not doing this. Only Tesla is doing this. We have the Giga Casting. The Giga Casting is basically a way to make it more effective and efficient. Now, I'm going to allow these two to explain it, and I'll cover it on the back end. Let's go and pay close attention because this right here is how you understand the company, not through its freaking ticker or clickbait articles. 
that you read when you sip your morning cup and read the Financial Times. This is how you dig into a business and find out what it's truly about or just respect innovation, industrialization, and engineering at its finest. Of course. Uh, so we're in the die casting factory here. What we're basically doing is we're collecting raw materials that you've seen, like the raw ingots of aluminum. Yeah. And we're using those to melt them at 700 degrees and then turning them into one giant, or we call it giga, casting part. So yeah. it's like, usually these parts aren't as big, so this is really the biggest castings in the world that yeah. you're seeing here. You see it here lying behind us because normally Correct. a car, the rear section of a car. Now he's going to go in and explain it where he got the guy there. That's pretty funny. But of course, they're taking ingots, they're taking pieces, melting them down, and utilizing the it, it, it for the casting in aluminum. So this is how we even take pieces that are no longer useful and still redirect them, and still we're able to utilize them for the car and not have waste. Our chassis is like made up of 70 onto 100 parts, different parts that are bolted together or welded or whatever. But this is just liquid aluminum goes into the system, is pressurized onto 6,000 tons. Um, and then just one part comes out. And that is a major leap in terms of efficiency in the quickness in which you can build cars, but right. also saving costs, right? For sure. Like we don't like traditional OEMs would have like a whole line with robots assembling parts, the whole logistics that comes along with it to just bring all the parts, make sure that they're in time, that they're good in quality. We have replaced all that by just one like machine. It's a big machine, but it allows us to just produce a part from raw materials. And right. And I want to just kind of highlight that. Remember that if, even if OEM are taking robots and they're welding 100 pieces together just to get the rear cast instead of the casting system that we're utilizing with this mold injection machine, then even the quality control on each item could be a default piece, right? And so not only can the piece have a default, but also when the piece is also applied, it could be a default in its application by putting it together. So it's just more room for error versus this way. And this approach is more effective and efficient. Again, the casting is just going to be more easier and it's going to save not only on time, but efficiency. And then there's so much on quality control, inventory and ordering from vendors and suppliers. So there's a lot of logistics that goes into those 100 pieces. You think, oh, well, they're just not doing 100 pieces. That's no big deal. Oh, the robots just don't, you know, weld them together no more like that. Okay, that's not a big deal. No, but you still have to order the pieces, right? You still have a price that's going to fluctuate for the pieces that you're ordering, maybe from one vendor, maybe from several vendors. Then you have to inventory that. Then you have to catalog it. Logistics, operations, there's a lot that goes into it. It's very like special what we're doing here. Yeah, and you hear the hissing behind it. Now we just got one piece. As you hear the clunking of the parts of aluminum that are broken off and thrown away, how long does it take as soon as you push the aluminum in to form a part like this? Uh, that's within like seconds, the parts in this like mold. Yeah. It takes a couple of seconds, maybe 10, to like cool down uh, before the robot extracts it and then places it on this conveyor. So it's really like within the blink of an eye, it's, you have this whole form filled and we can like get a part out. After right. that, there are some post-processing steps, but it's so much faster compared to like getting the different parts, different elements here, and yeah. welding those together. You're using this on Model Y, and you're using it on the Cybertruck. Correct. And yes. also, this whole process was meant for Model 2, or the smaller Tesla that is coming out. But then uh, Elon wanted to do it in one part, right? The whole chassis. But that's still a bridge too far. Can you tell us about that, or is that not I can't say too much about it. Like, it's all... Also now, see, now he's trying to get extra information and fit fish for stuff that hasn't been kind of released yet so he's like look bro one part this is what we do i think future will tell oh the future will tell you're just still keeping us on our toes oh, thank you man oh no worries yeah, keeping you on your toes and keeping you out of the business of Tesla. And guys, look, if I'm a fanboy or if people are Tesla bulls only and they don't use any common sense, then what's your excuse about this gentleman, right? Just talking about how this process is more effective and efficient. Are you going to call him a fanboy and a Tesla bull? Or are you going to actually listen to the experts on the ground creating the product? My pleasure. This is where the marriage happens. This area is called the General Assembly area, so this is where the General Assembly of the Model Y takes place. And where the car is married, these AGVs, or Automated Guided Vehicles, they enter with the bottom section of the Model Y, so containing uh, the battery pack and the drivetrain. 
uh, rear motor or two motors. And then it slowly but surely gets coupled to the upper section of the car, which is the body in this case. And slowly but surely, they are bonded into wholly electric metronome. Congratulations. So this happens every 45 seconds of every single day here in Berlin. So every 45 seconds in a day in Berlin, a car comes off the line. And I think this final part that he's talking about how fast the cars come off the line and just the history of the innovation of what's happening in transportation across the board is very insightful. And no one is breaking these records besides Tesla. The last person to do something as revolutionary as this when it comes down to manufacturing has been Henry Ford. So I always say that I never think of Tesla as just a car manufacturer, but a great manufacturer. And it shows not only in the cars, but in the batteries, not only in the batteries, but also in what else do we have? The Optimus, what we will have. So just alone, the batteries, the cars, and the Optimus will show you our ability to manufacture on the highest level. I'm going to allow this guy to finish this out. And a brand new Tesla Model Y ready to hit the road. I think we can safely say that Tesla has improved the way we make modern electric cars in a significant way. It's become faster, cheaper, and more eco-friendly, if you might say. Now, pay close attention to this part, okay? By pushing efficiency, they have lowered the prices we pay for our cars. And that made me think back to that other revolutionary car from the Americans back in 1908. Back then, it took Ford about 12 hours to produce a Model T from start to finish. And ordinary Americans paid about $850 for their car. But so 12 hours to create the Model T, and it was about $850 for that car. Let's continue. After Henry Ford introduced the moving assembly line, they gradually got it down to about one and a half hours for producing a single vehicle. And consumers needed to pay about $260. A so $260 and within an hour and a half versus 12 hours and $850. A significant change, a significant reduction from 80 to about 200. So 800 to 260. And the previous and the first Tesla car has gone from 100 plus down to 35, 40, where we have it now, and hopefully 25 pretty soon. Innovation at its finest. And also every 45 seconds. Significant improvement. And we can only hope that history will repeat itself thanks to these enormous factories like this Gigafactory from Tesla in Berlin. By improving efficiency and lowering prices, getting electric mobility to a broader audience. That's all the, uh, we, we ever want, right? That's what we're hoping for. So, Elon, I'm looking at you. Please keep improving and keep bringing us a 25,000 euro or dollar Tesla. It's about time. There's another one, 45 seconds. Please remember to like and subscribe this video. And oh, Amazing, amazing. Guys, <laughs> there's nobody out here doing that. No one can compete with Tesla when it comes down to this manufacturing. And we're making new revolutionary innovations. And if you saw the master plan number three and also the last investors day, they show that the process, the moving assembly line that Henry Ford created, they have a better assembly line that's coming out. One that runs in parallel, that stops jams and choke points of the actual processing and assembling. So it's going to be more effective and more efficient, allowing us to hit that target of 25K. I'm super excited. This is going to be great times ahead. And of course, this same manufacturing ability, not only to create the factories. Oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you, Tesla also creates their own factories. Unlike most OEMs, which usually utilizes third parties for the construction phase, Tesla does it with its own construction team building out their own factories in record-breaking times. So making amazing factories, making new factories like the energy storage department, which they're creating a new manufacturing line in a new manufacturing process for an energy storage system that there is no factory in North America. I mean, we are constantly applying that manufacturing process to other products. And this is why we're going to have the best robots 
We're going to have the best humanoid robots because Optimus is not being built just to push innovation for robotics. It's also being built at the same time for mass production and manufacturing, unlike a Boston Dynamics. We create products not from the perspective of designing them just for prototypes or a limited production, but we create these products and services from a perspective of being able to produce them in the masses. And we have the manufacturing expertise to make sure it happens. Like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can see another wonderful video. And I could continue to show that everyone hates Tesla because with what you saw today, there could be no sane person that still hates Tesla after seeing what I just showed you. Thanks to the team on the ground at getting the dirty work done. We all we got, and I'll see you on the next one.